everyone. I am Burlington Mayor Marianne Mead Ward, and I'd like to welcome you to the latest edition of Burlington Matters, where we assemble all of the incredible people in our community and discuss issues of importance to you, and hopefully uh, inspire and educate and give you some information uh, that you might be thinking about. And I know a lot of people are asking what the city is doing about climate change. It is a uh, top of mind issue for many people in our community. We declared uh, as a council unanimously uh, two years ago, a climate emergency. We have been on a long journey, uh, even before that at the city of Burlington, uh, looking at ways to reduce our environmental footprint and be more uh, environmentally friendly. And you'll hear a little bit about that. And we've been doing that in partnership with our community and one of our great partners, Burlington Green, and you're gonna hear about that as well, uh, but that uh, we're not done with that. Uh, we uh, we are going to continue to do uh, a lot of things here in the city of Burlington, and we have a climate action plan. And we're going to talk to you a little bit about some of the elements that are in that plan, uh, because I know residents want to know uh, how we are putting into action the declaration of the emergency. So without further ado, I would like to introduce my two uh, amazing guests here this morning. I have Amy Schnur, who is the executive director and co-founder of Burlington Green and Lynn Robichaud from the city of Burlington, who is our senior sust sustainability uh, coordinator. So I can't imagine that there's anyone in the city that doesn't know Burlington Green and hasn't heard of your work, uh, but if there is uh, one or two that might not, perhaps we'll start with you, Amy. Uh, tell us a little bit about Burlington Green and what you do. Go ahead. Thanks so much. Uh, yeah, it's a pleasure to be here and be a part of this fantastic community based organization that's been around, if you can believe it, since 2007. And um, uh, the mayor will recall being around those uh, that table early on when uh, it was a gentleman, a local resident named Kurt Coster, who put a local advertisement in the newspaper. Uh, saying that he was interested in forming a uh, organization here in Burlington dedicated to the environment. And a handful of committed residents got together and 14 years later, here we are, and the need for organization has never been greater. Uh, but I will say that, that um, our approach and our mission really hasn't changed over those um, 14 years in that we decided right out of the gate that we would advance what we call a AAA approach. So it's through awareness or education, as well as advocacy, championing great policies um, for the environment and uh, action, getting our hands dirty, rolling up our sleeves and getting out there, inviting the community to join us and making a difference. So we're really proud of the work that we've been doing. It's definitely a team effort and we, in, uh, work collaboratively with all sectors of the community to do the work that we do. I remember sitting around that table. I was fairly new to Burlington and uh, it was very inspiring to be part of that uh, that early group of folks who, and look, look where you all are now and we are now as a community. Uh, Lynn, I want to turn it to you to uh, talk a little bit about what a sustainability coordinator for the city of Burling uh, Burlington does. Uh, you have quite a diverse portfolio, uh, but walk the community through the work that you do for us. Thank you, Mayor. Um, yeah, it's it's a, a great uh, um, opportunity to work with the city to, to look after environmental sustainability initiatives, um, work across the board in terms of um, community actions and collaborations, such as working with Burlington Green, uh, as well as our own staff and greening our operations. And I'd say a big focus right now, obviously, is climate change, taking action on climate change, working towards our targets to be a net carbon neutral community, as well as net carbon neutral for our own city operations. So a number of things going on. And you are also, I believe, our liaison to the Sustainable uh, Development Advisory Committee of Council. Do you want to tell us a little bit about the work of that group uh, as well? And then I'll come back to Amy. I know there's some exciting things coming up. Go ahead, Lynn. Yeah, so the Sustainable Development Committee is one of our longest serving volunteer citizen advisory committees to Council and have been around since 1990 
developed the principles and objectives of sustainable development in 1994, and really um, advised council on, um, you know, working with developers, how can they green their developments, uh, making those uh, uh, comments and suggestions to council for consideration, but also working like Burlington Green to raise awareness in the community. Um, and in fact, their next event, they're partnering with Burlington Green to, um, to do a webinar on reducing single use plastics, which is definitely an issue these days. Uh, back to you, uh, Amy. What are some of the upcoming events that you've got going on? Go ahead. I was just going to say, um, Mayor, how long, how much time do we have? Because there's a lot going on. <laughs> I know. I, I, I was, uh, as I was preparing for this, the list of initiatives is quite extensive. So uh, yeah. there's lots to talk about. Yeah, I'll narrow it down. Um, as we say at Burlington Green, you know, Earth Day is actually every day. But certainly it is the month of April where uh, everybody seems to turn their attention more to what they can do to help the plant locally. So we're thrilled to be uh, collaborating with Lynn and the city on a number of initiatives um, this spring that really are um, fantastic opportunities to get out um, safely in the outdoors to really engage and learn about and take action on climate change. So uh, the first event coming up uh, very soon is on Saturday, April 23rd, uh, over behind Central Arena, and it's uh, called um, the Action on Climate Earth Day event. And Lynn and I kind of put our heads together a while ago because for many years we've had eco fair celebrations and events uh, where we bright we invite the community to come together um, with various um, booths and vendors and while they're cleaning up the city uh, as part of the citywide cleanup. But obviously with COVID we had to uh, pause on those celebration events for a few years, but action on climate can't wait and we can do this safely so this event taking place at the arena from 10 to 4 is really an opportunity to um, get the folks to really focus on three key areas that they can take action on climate. There are more, uh, but we wanted to keep the focus uh, where it is, which is through uh, e-mobility. So how, if we can't uh, always walk or cycle or take public transit, if we're gonna drive our cars, which of course we all do, uh, switch to e-mobility. So e-vehicles, e-bikes, e-scooters. And so that's gonna be a really exciting uh, element. And maybe I'll let Lynn comment on that in a moment. Uh, but the second area is the tree giveaway through the forestry department. So we're super excited about that and um, opportunities to order those free trees went live yesterday. So who knows, they may even all be scooped up because I think that'll be really popular. And then the third area is uh, by getting out there and caring for the environment. So this is our 12th year hosting the citywide cleanup. Uh, our record number, it has been 17,000 people in one week, which was a few years ago. And that's predominantly school children, but lots of faith groups, businesses, residents, families, you name it. Uh, the last two years we had to twist, we called it clean up green up with a twist where we had a lot of at home activities and people in their safe uh, community bubbles doing some cleanups. So I'm pleased to say that this year we're already up to 9,000 and it's not even Earth Week yet. So lots of people are registering. So that's another uh, opportunity on April 23rd where the community can come out, pick up some free cleanup supplies. We'll be giving out some pollinator seed packets to the first hundred folks to visit our welcome tent. So lots going on on April uh, 23rd. And just remind folks where that event is taking place, Amy. Yeah, it's behind. Time. Yeah, sorry, it's uh, at Central Park or behind Central Arena. Uh, in the parking lot space, you won't be able to miss it. We'll make sure there's lots of uh, visible signs and directions for folks. And it's from 10 a.m. to 4 p.m. That's great. I have participated in those cleanup green ups uh, dating back many years. And uh, for high school students out there, you can get community service hours for this. So I know uh, my kids have benefited from that. And of course, our whole environment and our city benefit from the, you know, 17,000 people. Wow. Out uh, in our streets, beautifying our community. Uh, so that's great to see. Um, I want to pick up on the electric mobility uh, piece because we know that 
even if the city gets to net zero in our operations with buildings and fleet and other things, that's only about, and, and Lynn will know the exact number, but that's only about 10% or something like that of all of the greenhouse gas emissions in the city. So the balance comes from uh, residential and commercial. And so we really need, uh, and, and that is almost all driven, uh, no pun intended, by, uh, by buildings and transportation. So we really need to make uh, different choices on, on both things. Uh, so let's talk about the transportation piece. The city is in the middle of an electric uh, vehicle mobility strategy. Lynn, tell us a little bit more about that. Yeah, thank you. Um, so this is an exciting project for us. It's one of the key program areas identified in the Climate Action Plan that Council approved back in 2020 around Earth Day, believe it or not. Um, so electric mobility is, as you said, trying to drive down the emissions from the transportation sector. So what are those actions that the city can do to help encourage uh, residents um, um, look at the opportunity to use or buy an electric vehicle? Um, and are there actions that the city can do, even community members like Burlington Hydro, um, the dealerships? Uh, so, you know, we're working in collaboration with Burlington Green on this project. We really want it to be a community based um, strategy. And part of this, uh, we're very excited as part of the Earth Day event, we have plug and drive coming to Burlington for a four week period. So, April 23rd is the launch date. Um, they're going to be here for four weeks and you can register and uh, test drive an EV and talk to an expert. And um, this really saves people time because plug and drive have a permanent facility up North Toronto. So instead of going driving all the way up there to test drive an EV um, with knowledgeable um, neutral people that are trying to sell you um, a vehicle. Uh, so this is a great opportunity to do it in Burlington. So we're quite excited about the whole thing and um, want to thank Burlington Hydro because they're a sponsor of this as well. And where does that take place? So you register online, but where does that event, uh, the, the actual driving of the cars, is that also at Central? Yes, so uh, Plug and Drive is setting up their trailer behind Central Arena, so they'll be there April 23rd, and they'll be there for four weeks. So yes, you can go to Plug and Drive's website and uh, look under their events page, and you'll find the uh, Burlington event. That's great. And, you know, I, I remember the first time I ever drove a uh, completely electric vehicle. It's, it's like a giant golf cart. <laughs> it feels a little like that. And it's very quiet, very quiet. And I remember turning to the, the person that I was in the car with and said, is, is this thing on? <laughs> can I go now? That was my first question. Uh, my second question was, can I, can I take it on the highway? Uh, you know, it, it just it just feels so different. And the answer to both is is yes. You won't hear it when it's on. It lights up, so you'll see. Uh, and you and of course it it operates like any other car. Um, I now have a plug-in hybrid. It gets uh, seventy five ish kilometers on a charge, a single charge, which for me and my purposes, going to community events and such, uh, really locally. Uh, I hardly ever have to go to a gas station. And I can tell you uh, when I run out of gas or I run out of electricity on my car, it gets loud. And I, I, I now resent the loudness, uh, but I don't have to go to a gas station. And when people have seen the, the price of gas with the time standing there uh, to, to do that and wait in line and, and do the transaction, the, there's, there's many other things that you save uh, that are beneficial from an electric vehicle while you're also saving the planet from those greenhouse gas emissions. So I really encourage people who are curious about, uh, about what it, what it, how it handles, how it drives. Uh, I, I guarantee you, uh, once you drive one, you will not want to go back <laughs> to a gas, a gas vehicle. Uh, that's my little plug for, uh, again, no pun intended, for, for the event. Um, uh, I want to come back to, uh, to you, Amy, because one of the things I've really appreciated so much about Burlington Green is providing very practical tips and things that people can do to reduce their footprint. And uh, I remember, you know, recently you were at the holiday market, the Christmas holiday market and, and giving advice on how to have a green Christmas and, and green gift giving. And of course, gift giving happens throughout the year, right? Birthdays and anniversaries and, and, and all of that. 
Um, and, and that's just one of the tips that, that you provide. Uh, you know, give us a few for those people that might be watching that may be saying, OK, I don't know if I can switch my vehicle yet to a, to an electric, but there's there's so many other ways that people can reduce their footprint. Uh, tell us a little bit about some of those. Yeah, I'd be happy to. Um, well, for since our inception, we've actually because we are residents ourselves, for the most part, we are able to provide those practical solutions and lived experiences, which makes it really relatable when we're out and about in the community. Um, and so we've been uh, providing what we call live green tips and resources for over a dozen years. Uh, but it's often the community actually that are coming to us with their ideas and solutions and what they're doing. And those really um, resonate with the community. So we're about storytelling. So we love shining a light on different examples of businesses, residents, families, community groups, when they are doing initiatives, they're advancing those tips and resources. Uh, we shine a bright light on that through our what we call community spotlight program. So it's taking the tips, putting them into action, seeing people execute on them, and then we shine a bright light and we share a story. And I can't tell you how effective that is because people see themselves in that example and say, well, that church is doing that or that business is doing that let's climb aboard and we sometimes connect those dots to those people that are actually demonstrating those actions by introducing them and that's one of the most uh, rewarding aspects of our work um, but you're absolutely right uh, we were at the holiday market and one um, and we hope to to for, for that event but all events for many years uh, we do what's called event greening and it's not just showing up an event and rummaging through all that waste, which you'll often see us doing uh, to separate the waste to make sure we reduce the amount of waste that's unnecessarily going to landfill. But we meet with the city events department or uh, Rib Fest or the holiday market folks, various um, event planners early on in the event planning process where we put our heads together and we have handy checklists. We have examples of vendor agreements on uh, what's going to be given out or what kind of refreshments are going to be served. And those are game changers, right? If Burlington is known for its amazing events, uh, but they do have an impact, right? They do leave an impact. So if we can minimize that and not have the environment an afterthought, but have it embedded into their tips and resources, it's fantastic. So we've had, um, you know, on average about an 85% waste diversion rate, but what people at those events, but what people don't see are things like we've eliminated the use of paper or some of the maybe more wasteful giveaways that we've said, you know, do vendors really need to give those out or the packaging that um, food is provided. We can make sure we connect with Halton Region to make sure the packaging is the correct packaging. So the scale of the work has gone from tips and resources to huge events and festivals. And then at the holiday market itself, it was so refreshing to have so many people, especially at a new event, come up to us and say, wow, it's so great to make, to see visibly that the environment is front and center at this high profile event. And people just loved getting reusable bags or tips on how they can package their um, gifts in a really um, useful and uh, repurposed uh, way. And just we have a really friendly team. So people just loved our team. And then we had volunteers. We had really quickly we recruited, I think it was 26 volunteers, many of them youth. They were looking for some volunteer hours for high school, but they actually, regardless of receiving those hours, said, Oh, I want to do it again. And they were standing out in the cold and they were directing folks and they were making sure waste was going in the right place. But uh, I just want to say that, you know, the tips and resources are fantastic, but it's really the community uh, building and networking where Burlington Green really shines. Uh, it's a great point. And, and, and it, it, I agree that there is such a capacity of people in the community wanting to do the right thing and make the right choice. There's a real hunger for that information. There's a desire to uh, to do what what they can. And, you know, all of those, uh, you know, whether the step is big, like you put solar panels on your roof or do a geothermal or smaller, you know, commit not to, uh, you know, buy bott bottled water, for example, but carry a reusable, uh, all of those and everything in between from from the uh, the easier to do to the to the more challenging, it all adds up. 
Yep. Uh, and it's all really important. And, and it's been really great to see. I mean, I, I saw the lineups and the people at, at the Burlington Green Booth really looking for information on how they could do a better job. So uh, so so it's great because we can't do this without the community. Right. As I said earlier, uh, the, the biggest source of greenhouse gas emissions is the private sector, residents and, and commercials. So we really need to. Um, to encourage that behavior. And it's, it's great to see that the community is already there uh, and, and willing if we give them the tools. Uh, so on that note, I'm going to turn it uh, back over to Lynn because we have uh, many, many initiative, initiatives underway that will help uh, people. One of them uh, that I'd, I'd ask you to talk about, but then you can talk about any of the other ones you want, is the Home Energy Retrofit program that we're working on in the city. It's 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 really uh, for us groundbreaking. It's very few municipalities have done this. So uh, so talk to us about what that all means and the benefit to folks who may be watching today. Thank you. Yeah, it, that's a challenging area working with our homeowners to improve energy efficiency and reduce the carbon footprint on a residential level because every every homeowner is different. Every home is different. And um, so we've been working with the Center for Climate Change Management at Mohawk College, a great organization to complete a feasibility study and some program design elements and how we can support um, residents who want to improve uh, energy efficiency of their homes and, re and most importantly, reduce their carbon footprint. Um, so we, we looked at a number of different uh, um, municipalities uh, and that are already delivering programs, look, looked at other jurisdictions, best practices. And it really came down to, um, you know, how we heat our homes. Almost everyone uses um, fossil fuels, whether it's natural gas or heating oil to heat our homes. And if we really want to, you know, uh, meet our net carbon neutral target, we, we have to figure out how can we help uh, homeowners to, to make that transition to, um, to stop using fossil fuels for heating. And uh, there's a, an option out there that a lot of people don't know about, and, but it's used in Europe very much so, is uh, air source heat pumps. So we're looking at a financial incentive uh, loan program for homeowners, um, um, loaning people up to $10,000 to install an air source heat pump and um, um, do some leak sealing to make sure their, their home isn't leaking energy. And uh, so the next step is just getting the budget in place for 2023 and getting the sort of uh, whole process on how homeowners can apply for a loan um, and uh, what the approval process, but we want to make it as streamlined and you know, easy as possible for homeowners to do because we really want to encourage this, this transition. Um, so we'll be working with our, our community partners like Burlington Green to, to engage residents on you know, how they can make this change. But there's other things that are going on. As I said, the electric mobility strategy, we're trying to um, uh, support electric mobility in city property by installing uh, EV charging stations uh, across the city. We put in a funding application to the atmospheric fund to help support, support more EV charging stations. Um, the integrated mobility study that our transportation colleagues is, is doing is really important because we want to look at, you know, how can we support sustainable transportation options. So it's not just about EVs, but it's cycling, walking, transit. And, you know, we've focused so much on the cars over the years. Um, we've got to make sure that we've got an equitable transportation system as well. Um, what else? Uh, I, I do want to mention that on uh, for our own city uh, operations, um, we have just opened up uh, City View Park Pavilion, um, and it is a um, net carbon neutral facility uh, with solar panels. And Council's just given us the go ahead on Skyway Arena redevelopment, which again has been designed to be a low carbon footprint, um, which is a little more challenging to do with an arena because of the energy it uses, but we're excited. Our staff uh, are very excited about that. So that's some of the things that are going on. Um, and I don't know if you want to talk about climate adaptation as well. 
That's a whole other, you know what, I'm going to turn it to Amy because I know she has lots of thoughts about that. Uh, we just have a couple of minutes left. Uh, but yeah, that is a key part. And, and as you were talking, I was thinking one of the best ways uh, to uh, to adapt to climate and, and mitigate is through trees. And of course, you mentioned the, the, the tree, uh, the tree giveaway earlier. Uh, Amy, um, uh, turning it over to you to talk about things that we can do uh, collectively together in partnership around climate adaptation. Yes, thanks very much. Um, yeah, I mean, Lynn nailed it. And with the tremendous climate action plan, we really in uh, when we're dealing with a climate emergency must put the priorities on transportation and our buildings. That being said, uh, it is a climate emergency. So we need to take action on any front that we can. And certainly there are natural solutions to climate change, both mitigation and adaptation. And at Burlington Green, we have found that caring for nature, planting trees, uh, stewardship projects are our most popular entry point for residents to come in to therefore get on their green path, on their journey to start thinking about things like home retrofits or transportation. But it's simple, it's easy to do, and I know you've both planted trees, and there is something so rewarding and gratifying and you just feel you've just done some great in the world. And so that kind of spurs you on to do more things. So in addition to the tree giveaway uh, on Saturday, April 23rd, and I just want to emphasize to uh, everybody, you do need to um, register for those uh, in advance. Um, on April 30th, we're going to be teaming up with the city forestry department uh, to have a couple hundred folks join us in planting 500 trees at Millcroft Park. Uh, so that's actually almost full. We opened it. That just shows how many people uh, want to come out and plant trees. And all year long, uh, if you go to burlingtongreen.org, we have one of our most popular programs called Nature Friendly Burlington, where there's ongoing uh, activities and programming to help people right here in Burlington connect with and care for nature which is also taking action on climate change. That's awesome. Uh, thank you. Uh, I feel, I don't know where the time went. We are out of time. Uh, we feel like we just started the conversation, but I'd like to give a huge thank you to my two guests, Amy Schnur, the Executive Director of Burlington Green Environmental Association and Lynn Robichaud, our, uh, right here at the city, our Manager of Environmental Sustainability. Thank you so much uh, for, uh, for being here. And everyone, Mark, April 23rd, uh, there's lots of great things going on at Central Park. And and have a great rest of your day, whatever you are doing. For uh, Burlington Matters, I'm signing off now. Uh, Mayor Marianne Mead Ward, thanks for joining us. Mm -hmm.